Okay, let's just start. Pay attention. Okay, welcome back to Wisdom, Sean. Thank you. Did you have a great weekend? I bet. Okay, are you getting ready to school? Oh, some of them already started school, right? Okay, if your school started, raise your hand. Let me see how many of you guys. Ooh, okay, good. All right, and then I'm so glad that uh, many of you came back from the, your vacation. And good to see all of you. Let's pray for our worship. Let's pray. <laughs> good Lord God, thank you so much for giving us a new day to come to church to worship you. Today is a holy day, which is your day, Lord God. Continuously, I'll give you your, your children, your wisdom and guidance, Lord God, to know you more and get closer to you. 오늘 새하루를 두시고 또 주님을 예배하기 위해서 모였습니다. 주님을 알고 닮아가는 삶이 될수 있도록 도와주세요. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, our praise, praise team, come on out. Good, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, still, if you want to join praise team, yeah, we have a room available, okay? <laughs> and also, we have a newcomers today, right? 그래요, 최명진, 우리 새로운 친구 있어요. 몇 학년이에요? Oh, fourth grader이구나. 우리 4학년, fourth grader, older fourth grader, raise your hand. Okay, we have a new fourth grader, Choi-myung-jin. Okay, why don't we give him, give him a big welcome and yay! <laughs> 4학년 될 거예요. 그러면, so continuously, we're going to learn about Exodus 34, 6, and 7. We did it last week. 우리 지난주에 했던 건데, 다시 한번 우리 친구들 하면서 리뷰하고 외워보길 바래요. So continuously, we will just memorize our memory verse, Exodus 34, 6, and 7. So when you read it, if you see letter T, from the words, then what do you have to do? You have to stand up and sit down. Can we do it? Okay, let's do it. One, two, three. Bounding in faithful love and truth, maintaining faithful love to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. <laughs> so, a group A and B, so this is a competition. So you have to read it too, not just standing up and sit down. I know you're doing, you're just reading by yourself, but as for unity, all together, okay? I have to, I want to hear from your voice. So group one, group A, group B, all together, okay? So if you do well, and uh, I'll just decide which one can get the 300th point from the unity, all together, starting from the first, and at the end, you have to read it through. And if you see this time, letter O, okay? If you see letter O from the words, you have to stand up and sit down. Okay. So I'm just looking at the unity and teamwork. Okay, one, two, three. Good. I heard from the group A, Exodus 34, 6, 7, how group A. Did you guys do it? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you guys really tried well. Continuing from the last week, today's uh, the story from the first kings, and um, the life can be difficult. So when you just ask about, uh, do you really feel that your life is difficult? And the, from the second service, the kids said, no, so happy. How about you guys? Do you feel that your life is difficult? So maybe your school is starting right now. So feels like a, uh, overwhelmed, and so I have to prepare <laughs> for a new semester, right, right? But life can be difficult, and we are all in need of the same help. Your parents, and even your friends, yes, we do all. The Bible is God's word, and we can uh, count on it because it is truth. It is true, right? right? The word of God is full of promise from God. In story, today's story, we'll see how God kept his promises with this Solomon. So God is compassionate and full of love and truth. He is also overflowing with the mercy. And what is a mercy? What is a mercy? Yes, that's true, yes. 
We are all sinners. The wage of sin is death. We all need to deserve our punishment, but God doesn't want to punish us. We call that as a mercy. And Solomon's a temple, magnificent <laughs> student dedicated to be place of worship to the Lord. The Lord is worthy of our worship, and we should worship Him in spirit uh, and in truth. So we can worship God anywhere. So today is what up? Yeah, I forgot to mention. Today is what up? We can worship God anywhere because Jesus made a way for us to be with with God, with the Lord. So this is important things that you have to remember. So we are anywhere, any places we can worship, and God is with us, right? So when uh, when was the last time you received the mercy from another person? So you already know what is a mercy mean. So so we always get the mercy from God. But uh, when was the last time you received the mercy from another person? Maybe you just made us something wrong at home. And who forgives you all the time? God and your parents. And or maybe you just poke your friend. <laughs> but it was not really an, on purpose to hurt your friend. But you just poke your friend, but it was really hurt your friend. And your friend just forgives you. <laughs> that is what called that as mercy too. So all sinners, we deserve punishment and are, we are great in need of rescue. And we cannot save ourselves. We already know. That's why we all talk about the good news. And God shows us mercy when he does not give us a punishment that we deserve. And Jesus took our punishment on himself when he died on a cross for our sin. So today we are going to continue to learn how God used Solomon as a king. In today's story, we'll read that Solomon built the temple. And from the last three, what do you remember? So God granted wisdom to Solomon. And when Solomon's father, David, died, uh, God told Solomon to ask, to ask for anything. And Solomon asked for what? What did he ask for? Yes. God's wisdom. Yeah, he didn't ask anything for himself, right? And also, instead of making selfish requests, Solomon asked God make him a wise. God's wisdom. So this was very important since Solomon had a big job ahead of time. He was to be Israel's new king. And the responsibility that came with the role was great. And he expects Solomon and all the people to depend on him. And Solomon would need God's wisdom to rule. So basically, we, last time we talked about the Solomon wants to distinguish between sin and uh, good and evil, good and evil, right and wrong. And how about you guys? Do you think that you need the God's wisdom to distinguish between good and evil? I think so. We all need it. Yes. And he would need to lead the people to worship God too. So Solomon didn't get anything right. He's a, he's a person and he was not a perfect man. So who is only the perfect man? Jesus. That's right. So he made some big mistakes, but God was merciful. So God didn't give Solomon punishment he deserved for his sins. So God shows us mercy when he trusts in Jesus. So uh, you just came to the worship God, and we are here at this moment. We are doing the worship, right? But olden days, what do they need to do for worship? They need to bring animals to sacrifice. But in these days, we don't need to anymore because Jesus paid for our debts, everything. So we'll just find out why Jesus has had to die on a cross later. Okay. And also... Um, let's think about the devotion God inspired in Solomon and people of Israel and the devotion he inspires in us. So devotion is a feeling of a strong love and loyalty. So one of the ways that people showed their devotion was through building the temple. And when the temple was completed, God was pleased. He filled the temple with the glory. And we'll just hear about them more. Okay, I will show you. What is the what up today? And let us recite one more time our memory verse. Thank you. <laughs> Bible address, Exodus 
34, 6, and 7. So when Solomon became a king, uh, he purchased expensive timber from King Hiram of uh, Tyra. Uh, 30,000 workers were uh, conscripted to work in shift cutting trees in Lebanon, and large cedars and juniper trees were deflated from down the coast of uh, Jaffa. So it means that you don't have to actually uh, every single detail know, but you have to know from the Bible, he purchased a very uh, best quality, best things purchased for the building a temple. So they were then held and uh, they put a drag over, over land to Jerusalem. It wasn't easy, but he did it. <laughs> and also, the Solomon had the 7,000 carriers. 7,000 carriers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hills managed by 3,304 men. They cut out a large blocks of high-grade stone and shaped them into the shape before transferring them to the temple. In this way, uh, no hammer and scissor or iron tool was heard at the temple, so it was, built, it was being built. The temple was so temple was a built. Uh, the temple was a 90 feet long and 30 uh, feet wide and 45 uh, feet high. The interior wall was a uh, leaned cedar boards, and on the wall around the temple were carving of angels, palm trees, and open flowers. In a sanctuary, what do you see? It was overlaid inside with a pure gourd. The floors of the inner and outer room were also covered with a gourd, and gourd was used to create the altar, table for bread, and lampstands, and other furnishings. What is that? What up? There was a gold flag work and large golden cherubim, cherubim, golden lamps, and tongues, pure gold, basins, wig trimmers, sp uh, sp sprinkle boards and dishes, and the censers, incense burning. The silver and gold furnishings that King David had dedicated were brought into the temple. The tall crowd men who worked with the bronze were hired from King Hiram to make a two large pillar for the portico. Uh, portico of the temple, a large wash basin stood on the top of the 12 bronze bowls, uh, 10 marble stands and the uh, basin were also crafted in bronze. It took us uh, seven years to complete the magnificent to the temple. So how many years they took to finish the, their temple? Seven years. The elders and vast number of people were assembled at the holiday feast to watch as the Ark of the Covenant was brought into the temple. So this is the, the picture showing that they brought the Ark of the Covenant to the temple when the temple was finished. It was put the most high place below the wings of the cherubim, cherub, a winged uh, angelic being described the biblical tradition as attending on God. They felt that according to the Bible, that place is for God was a presence with them. So when the priest withdrew from the holy place, the cloud of glory of the Lord filled the temple and was so overwhelming, the priests were unable to perform their service. So this was the same. Yeah, they felt the presence of the Lord. They were not able to continue um, continue perform the, their service. So Solomon blessed the people. This the Solomon blessed the people and praised God. And the Lord has kept his promise to David. And then Solomon has built a temple for the name of the Lord. So he just declared because of God uh, kept the promise that so he could have done it. So he stood before the altar with his arms spread and knelt and prayed. And many your eyes look at his temple night and days, hear our prayers, hear from heaven. And when you hear forgive, the king then told the congregation, may the Lord be with us as he was uh, with our ancestor and never leave, Jake, forsake us. May he turn our hearts to fully obey his commands. 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats were offered in sacrifice. So they praised the Lord and they did worship. And how many animals do they sacrifice? 22,000 cattle 
and 120,000 sheep and goats. So in these days, when you come to church, do you need to bring the animal to sacrifice? We don't. Yeah. So we'll just find out why Jesus had to die and what's the reason that we don't bring the, our sacrifice animal for ourselves. See? So when Solomon had built the temple in his own place, God spoke to him. And I have consecrated his temple by putting my name there forever. If you obey me, and you will never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. So he promised that God promised that. He was just so pleased that the Solomon uh, the built his temple. He was just so happy. And he made the promise, if you obey my commandments, commands, then I will be with you and I'll bless you forever. Okay. Okay. So not only did Solomon use his wisdom to build a temple, but he encouraged the Israelites to love and obey God. And the Solomon um, actually, uh, he wasn't, uh, he, he got the God's wisdom, but he wasn't really perfect man. And oh. he made the mistakes and he, uh, through the God's mercy, he didn't get the punishment, but we do have uh, some consequences from the, our sin also. So Solomon praised God saying, there is no like, uh, like God. But like a first king, Verse 14 through 16, there were cedar birds from the floor of the ceiling. He built an inner sanctuary, the most high place, so that uh, the people believed that that place is for the God is presence with them. So what did Solomon do when he finished the praying? Um, he, after he prayed, he stood up and he blessed his people, the whole congregation. And it was, uh, in these days, uh, when you come to church, I already mentioned s uh, several times, we don't need to bring sacrifice animals anymore because the Jesus paid for our debts, for our sin. So we'll just find out uh, the, what was about it, why he had to die on a cross. Okay, so this get us some idea why he had to die on a cross. And yeah, preschooler, little ones, they often ask about why Jesus is still on the cross. Why don't we just ask him to come down from the cross and visit us? Yeah, that was, you know, when my kids were young, they just asking about question. Did, oh, Mom, just ask Jesus to come down from the cross and visit us. But we're just showing that um, that was a God just uh, demonstrated his great love for us. He died on the cross to pay for our sin, and then we don't need to bring the sacrifice animals. So in olden days, when they have a worship at temple, they bring the own their animals to sacrifice for the forgiveness. What do they do? They uh, replace their hands upon the animal and pray for their sin, the, the God's forgiveness. And then they own by their hands, they have to kill their animals to sacrifice. It was very hard for them, but they had to do it. To go through that procedure, they can get a, a forgiveness. They can just uh, get the uh, forgiveness. So that's why they have to kill only animals to get get forgiveness from from God. But in these days, we don't need to. I just mentioned several times because of Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, who died for our sin, Jesus died for our sin, and if you truly believe that, and He resurrected third days later and he went back to heaven, right? So he went over the victory over death. And if you truly believe that, and he became a, he, uh, he became a, your savior, then uh, you are saved, and you don't need to bring your sacri uh, sacrifice animals for the Lord, and you are saved. And also God just promised that if you, if we obey God's commands, he said he will be with us and bless forever. So Solomon built a temple, but temple was a place where God met with the people. The people could go to make sacrifices and worship God. They used to do. Today, when you trust in Jesus, he is with us wherever we go, and we can look to him for forgiveness and help. And I do have a question video from the kids. I like his last question, where, which the place you love to meet with the Lord? Have you ever thought about it? Which place? Yes, Haley. 
Church, that's great. Here, yes, the worship place, church. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something. Um, when I, actually, I've been teaching serving kids for 22 years. And when I just first beginning started, the worship wasn't really easy. Yeah, so it wasn't easy. And some people, some kids were not really pay attention. And some kids wanted to really tell each other because some of the kids were knew me as uh, my kids, you know, kids mother. That's why. So the, when my first one was a third grade, and I became a minister, and then I serving the kids, and the, some of them knew as uh, uh, my first one, Michelle's mom. So they didn't look at me as a minister, they look at me as um, uh, Michelle's mom. So they didn't really pay attention, listen to me. But I was worshiping, uh, the, some of the worship leaders at the uh, praising leader was in front. And I was in the back side, and I was observing them, and some of them were just making, poking each other, and making a uh, whispering sound, and they were not really pay attention. And my, my heart was uh, aching, and I wasn't really uh, not happy. I was uh, miserable at the back there. Yeah, and then I just prayed to the Lord. Lord, I don't know what to do. Yeah, if I say something, they might get mad, and they're not gonna listen to me, or well, we are all, most of them, majority, they're just uh, pay attention, worshiping, they're praising. But two, three of them were not pay attention. I don't know what to do. But later, God spoke to me. And I wasn't, you know, my heart wasn't really crying. But I was tearing. I was tearing, and God spoke to me. I'm so happy because they are here. <laughs> what irony. I was uh, really made a rule that worship, they have to sit down nicely and listen. And when we praise the Lord, they have to all stand up and they, they have to praise the Lord and follow the rule. I was in the back and some of them, the few of them, not following. But God, you know, I was tearing. I think at that moment God was tearing. I wasn't sad. I was mad at them, but God spoke to me. I'm so happy that they are here with us. So you guys mentioned that the, where is the loving place to, you, to meet God? Church, here, worship place, and also your house, your room, anywhere. If you call his name, and God love to talk with you, God love to hear from you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with us all the time. Thank you for watching about us all the time, Lord God. Today uh, is a heavy topic. Uh, the Solomon uh, built a temple a long time ago. Yes, we don't have to bring the, our sacrifice anymore for all our um, the sins to get the for, uh, forgiveness to the Lord God. Thank you for dying for our sin and uh, save us from the bondage of sin. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.